Hey guys, subscribe for daily content. And if you're shopping for gear, make sure you check out the description for the newest items at some of the very best online retailers. There's also links for some of the items that I personally recommend. Thanks. What's going on YouTube? Metal Complex here and today I've got a very interesting knife review slash knife overview to share with you guys. This is the CRKT Obverse designed by Alan Foltz. Now, let me make this really, really clear. There's a lot of people who they hear CRKT and they immediately, they're not going to watch the video. They're not going to hear what I have to say. They just automatically associate CRKT with uh, a certain lower tier in the knife world. This is this is quite a ways uh, from what I expect CRKT to be at. And I don't mean that necessarily in a bad way. Uh, I've always enjoyed CRKT knives. Uh, I, uh, I think there are obviously some brands that are substantially lower in quality for the money than where CRKT generally finds themselves. But over the years, I've seen some interesting stuff, some more interesting stuff, and it's kind of kept my eye on CRKT. This is, holy moly, the quality on this thing is off the charts. Now, um, this is definitely, I can say this right at the beginning of the video, this is the nicest CRKT, um, or one of the nicest CRKTs I've ever seen. Um, recently, they did a collaboration with Hoag uh, that I thought was really, really great. Um, this is very clearly manufactured in China, and I don't mean like, you know, crappy manufacturing in China. I mean like this is well into the premium end. I don't know if it's actually like CRKT's own factory or if they just use one of the premier Chinese OEMs. It feels very, very good, like top tier manufacturing quality. So uh, it has the CRKT logo on it. It's a CRKT right, branded knife designed by Alan Foltz, I believe is his name. I couldn't remember if, that, if I said that or not. Uh, but the quality is 100% <laughs> right in line with a lot of those premier Chinese OEMs, right? Um, so I just wanted to say that right off the bat. It is available right now. I'll link it right down below in the description. It does help my channel when you use those links, but that's entirely up to you. Thanks to CRKT for sending it in. Thanks to my patrons for supporting me. And please make sure to follow me on Instagram at metal underscore complex. This is actually a very good design, but I do have some nitpicks, right? Uh, and I'll get into those here in just a moment. I'm going to go ahead and get some quick specs on it. Overall length. We're coming in at seven and a half inches. Blade length, we're coming in just shy of three and a half, about 3.45. Cutting edge, about three and an eighth, right? A little area in there that's kind of unused. Uh, let's go ahead and do some size comparisons. So uh, any custom skills you find in this section can be found down in the description under Original Goat and others. Up against the 8010 and the 8020.5. Very similar, uh, similar size to the 8020.5. Uh, quite a bit more cutting edge, though. Let's go ahead and put it up against the Spyderco PM2, whoops a daisy, and the uh, Spyderco Para 3, much closer to the size of the Para 3, but again, way more cutting edge. And then finally, let's put it up against the Benchmade Griptilian, or in this case, the Ritter Hogue and the Hogue Deca. Again, similar to the Hogue Deca. How's the action? Actually, really good. The uh, pivot is very, very smooth. The thumb studs, which are kind of like tapered doorknob things. I don't know. But honestly, the leverage on them is great. It can also be front flipped and surprisingly is a pretty good front flipper design. You can also very easily reverse flick it. The detent is tuned properly. The pivot is very smooth. A lot of these elements here are what indicated right off the bat. This is like a premium Chinese OEM. That's what it feels like, right? Access to the lock bar is there, but not ideal. It's not bad, right? I just wish that this was cut a little bit lower. And this area is what makes it awkward because I want to disengage it up here, but that's where it's the most pinchy. The best place to dis disengage the lock bar is right here. And that's all right. It doesn't quite meet the cutting edge when the thing comes down. So you can move this over and let it close, right? It'll do all that. It's good. I just wish this area was a little bit different. I honestly don't really like this peak right here. It's not bad, and it's obviously designed to feel like you've got, you know, a locked-in choke-up position. But I don't think it really needed to be there, and it makes locking or, or disengaging the lock bar a slightly awkward, but it's not a deal-breaker. It's just like a, uh, I wish that was different kind of thing, right? The action itself, very premium. Uh, let's go ahead and do carry profile thickness up against the Spyderco Pair 3. It is thicker. I want to point out here, we do actually have full titanium liners. All of this, all of this is titanium. This is not just blue steel. No, no, no. 
all titanium. Uh, and then I think um, I think the the bolsters were listed as. Sorry, I literally cut the video and went to go check because I was second guessing myself. The bolsters are in fact also titanium, which is pretty cool, and they're actually bolsters. Take note of this. We have titanium liners separate from the bolster, separate finish, which is also titanium. And then the scales, which are not laminated, carbon fiber there, carbon fiber, laced blue carbon fiber. That's that's pretty nice. And it's all contoured, right? I know that we have some diehard CRKT haters in the comment section that are going to have to aggressively ignore these details. It's going to get difficult. It's going to get difficult. There's a lot of elements here that make this a very premium knife, right? Um, but, uh, anyways, uh, yeah, that's what we're looking at for the materials here. Uh, and then we have M390 for the blade. Admittedly, um, you know, this, this held up fine against like just cutting some basic things over the last couple of days. Again, if you're not familiar with my channel, I don't pretend to like go out and test these things extensively and then come back and say, oh yeah, I carried it for a couple of months and, uh, really, uh, batoned a lot of logs and stuff. No. Uh, in fact, admittedly, I just carry and use these like a regular pocket knife, right? I don't do extensive crazy testing. It's a day or two for a design I'm familiar with. In this case, we have a liner lock and we have a blade shape I'm familiar with. We have manipulation I'm familiar with, right? Pretty straightforward. On something that's more complex, maybe a little bit longer, but no, I'm not taking them out and doing any extensive testing and I don't have the proper equipment to really be able to tell you, yes, this is properly heat treated M390, right? I have no idea how they're heat treating this. My guess would be industry standard, 59 to 61. It held up fine against a little bit of cardboard. A lot of times when it's super soft or they're hitting it at 56, 57, it only takes a few passes through cardboard and wow, it is dull. This is not the case. It's still plenty sharp. It's still plenty bitey. Honestly, really sharp. So I have to assume they're hitting it at least there, but I don't know. Maybe one of the other channels that tests this stuff extensively will be able to say. From my perspective, it seems all right. Um, but, uh, anyways, I, I believe we were transitioning from carry profile to, oh, you know, we weren't, we didn't do the rest of the carry profile length and height up against the PM2 and para three. So lengthwise we're coming in very similar to the uh, para three, actually nowhere near as long as the PM2, nowhere near as tall as either. So that excess thickness that this knife has over like the para three is honestly just, it's all ergonomic comfort. That's, it's really pleasing. Let's go ahead and weigh it. Like I said, titanium, 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 titanium. All this is titanium. And then M390 for the blade and carbon fiber for the scales. We have three, uh, I'm sorry, 3.32 ounces of weight for nearly 3.5 inches of blade. Very good ratios. Balance on this knife is coming in. Yeah, behind the pivot, but in the primary position because of that awkward hump right there. This is the standard grip. This is the choked up grip. So, at that weight, nothing feels off. It all feels fine. Let's go ahead and do a hardware check. I'm gonna get out my tools as per usual. My tools are very inexpensive and very recommendable. You can find them right down in the section of my description that talks about the tools I use on this channel. Where are we at? T8 there. So we got um, T8 for the pivot. And then awkwardly, <laughs> there's this another screw right below it on the bolster and that is a bit of an eyesore. Um, I really wish what they had done here was I don't know that we really needed the liners to be blue. I wish that the liners were not independent of the bolster and then the bolster was actually a faux bolster in all part of the frame. And then that blue contrast could have just been with the backspacer and the pocket clip, which would have been fine. And the reason I want that is because it would have eliminated the need for a screw here. Um, you probably still would have seen screws here on the scale and then underneath there would have been screws for the frame into the backspacer. But this is probably the least appealing screw. That's such a weird thing. And they did that because this, this the bolster is independent, right? They probably wanted to make sure the bolster wasn't wiggling around. With only one screw holding it in, it could have. With two screws, no, it won't be the case, right? But that's there. T6, 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 and probably a couple more T6 screws underneath here. It's going to be a lot of screws to fully release this knife from itself. <laughs> it's a fancy way of saying disassemble. But it's not a deal breaker. It's more hardware than I love, and it's smaller head sizes than I typically love. But it's actually, once you get those fasteners out, it's very simple, straightforward, very easy to 
uh, maintain and put back together. As long as you have the right tools for the job, you should be good to go. Let's measure blade stock thickness and get into the meat and potatoes of it here. So we have a blade stock thickness of 120, it's saying 123.5, it's probably 125 thousandths. It's about what I expect. All right, meat and potatoes time. I'm actually really impressed with the, not only the, the design, but the overall quality here. And like I said, you know, it's either one of CRKT's factories and they've just really, really stepped it up. It's no secret that CRKT makes some knives in China. I believe they also make some knives in Taiwan. And then they use, you know, periodically they'll do like a uh, collaboration with companies like Hogue to make something, you know, here in the USA. I think they've also done other things in the USA. It's kind of all over the place, right? But it's a CRKT branded knife. And whoever the OEM is, whoever made this is very clearly, like there's no question whatsoever. It's, it's definitely an OEM that makes knives for other companies or ha is one of those major companies and they just, they, they know how to put things together. Uh, things like the transition from the bolster to the carbon fiber is very clean. The carbon fiber itself is absolutely gorgeous. This blue and silver weave carbon fiber. God, I don't, we don't see this enough. This is so spectacular. It's so nice. And it's one of the biggest, like, kind of personality things with this knife. It just really looks good. Um, fit and finish all the way around. There is no question. I want this to be known because people love to say, CRKT has fit and finish issues. Yeah, on some of the lower tier stuff. This is not in that tier. It's not. It's not me just like, you know, fluffing it. And I don't know what I'm talking about. I do. <laughs> I, I know what you're referring to as far as CRKT and fit and finish issues. This is not in that territory. This is a super nice knife. Fit and finish is essentially perfect. I have no issues in that department. Any critiques I'm going to have are with the design, right? That's separate from fit and finish. So let's just be clear. Trying to mitigate some of the, you know, the less than fully aware commenters there in the in the comment section. I, I just want to be really clear about this. Ergonomics. Back here, I, I, I understand the shape and the purpose of this shape. If you're in the standard grip, you have three fingers that almost perfectly fit into this area. And then you have this awkward, like, I'm not sure re really where my pinky is supposed to go. And it's fine. It's okay in this grip, right? The edges are nicely knocked down. There's no awkward 90 degree. You can see it's really nicely rounded off there. Choked up. Now, this is where I would hold it, right, in a hammer grip. It's fine. The pocket clip is just too long. I don't mind where it's mounted. I, I don't consider that shallow carry. I just think the pocket clip itself is too long, and it has a little bit of a, a bill, right? So you feel that right in the middle of your hand. Uh, I, I'd love to see that backed up a bit and maybe just the – the. you see how this is like the, the top corner? This is peaked out. It would be cool if they just matched it, kept the curvature, and shortened it up right here. Um, it also would have been great to find a way to implement a symmetrical pocket clip so that we could have had this milled out for lefties. Because as you can see here, as a right-hand dominant person, I don't have a problem manipulating this knife with my left hand. So I have to assume people who are left-hand dominant will be even better at it. Uh, so that would have been cool, but okay. I think the pocket clip's a little long, but it's fine. Functionally, it's it's fine. It's It works just great. I just really don't like it when the clip bills are well past the 50% line of the knife, especially a knife of this size, because that means the bill's going right into my hand, right? Outside of that though, ergonomically, it's it's pretty good. This area, like I said, it sort of locks your, it, despite making the, the area where you disengage the lock bar, it makes that area a little awkward, but it does create for some ergonomic comfort here. And the uh, the ramp with the jimping back here complements the index finger position very well. So that's nice. Truthfully, as a regular Joe, I'm gonna be holding it more like this and like this. And in those positions, it also works very well. In the rare situations where I'm holding the knife like this, it is very comfortable outside of the pocket clip, right? The blade is a belt satin finish, and it looks fine. Whoever did it, did a decent job. The I find the finish on the blade to look substantially cheaper than the rest of the knife. The blade shape itself, I think, is great, and wow, it is aggressively hollow ground and pretty darn thin. I mean, it's it's great. It's just nice, big, long, straight edge, good utilitarian, uh, utilitarian blade shape. It's got a nice flat, nice swedge. The cutting apex is even on both sides. 
a little bit of a weird area right here, right? But that, that's okay. They actually did a really good job with it. Look at that. I mean, as far as like how that could have ended up, honestly, I think that's pretty great. But you look at this part of the knife and you're like, oh boy, we got blue titanium. We got blue and silver lace carbon fiber. We got a dark gun metal bolster. It's all contoured. Wowee. That is premium. I can't wait to see what the blade looks like. Oh, okay. It's satin. It's okay. Um, I, I would have loved to see a nice, it's the same thing I always say. You guys are saying it with me. A nice high polished tumbled finish I think looks so much better. It looks so much classier. The satin finish is fine. And a lot of people think the satin finish looks better than a tumbled finish, right? But um, I, I really would have preferred something like um, what came on the Sleesh uh, Bowie um, from Spyderco originally. Not the new one, the old one, or the Python. A lot of people will say, oh, that's too premium. That's too premium. Kaiser does it. Or they, does, they do it really close, right? I, Kaiser's tumbled finish is like 80% of that. Uh, that would have looked great, right? Um, so that's just a preference, but I think it would have matched better. Uh, outside of that, though, the blade is is very nicely done. Nothing is overly sharp where it shouldn't be. I don't like that we have codes. Like, this really cheaps it up, right? Fold's design is fine, but I would mash that in over here. This code, like, CRKT seems to be one of those companies that just has to have a code on there. CRKT logo on the face of the blade is it's fine, but on a knife like this, like, this is, a, this is much more of a showpiece. CRKT, I would uh, I would have put that somewhere else, right? Find a way to put it on the spine of the blade or find a way to implement on some other part of the knife where it's there, but it's not like being highlighted here. I get that, you know, we're proud of this project, but the people who buy this stuff, they really want to appreciate the knife. They want to support the company, but they want to appreciate the aesthetic of the knife. Stuff like this, it's just hard because it just... It, it looks like a, a really, really fancy car. Imagine a Bentley, right? I don't care. If you, if you don't like Bentley, imagine a luxury brand that you like, right? Whatever. But it's like one of those cars, and then on the windshield, they got a big sticker that says Bentley on it. That's stupid. <laughs> it doesn't look good. I also don't like it, even on something as simple as a Camaro. I also think it looks stupid to put the word Camaro on the windshield of your Camaro, despite the fact that it says Camaro on the back of your Camaro in the form of a factory badge. That's much smaller and out of sight, which leads into my point, is a better way to do that because the people buying the car want to appreciate the looks and lines of the car. They're not necessarily buying the badge, right? They're buying the car. Supporting the company, but they're buying the car. Um, that's real nitpicky, right? But I just feel like this the look of this knife is so nice, right? It, look, it really would have benefited from not having that there. The backspacer looks fine. Very nice. Uh, and honestly, with it just being lipped liners and a backspacer, it's, it honestly looks pretty cool, right? Normally, we don't have these flows and lines and things. It's just straight. But it looks good. Contrast between the gunmetal, the laced carbon fiber, and this denim anodized titanium is actually very appealing to me. Anyways, we have a, uh, I don't believe there's a steel lock bar insert here. And I'll, I'll take a look at the inside. It doesn't need it, but I just want to, uh, I just want to be sure. Um, no, unless I'm missing something. No, it definitely does not. It's just the detail. Well, that's fine. It doesn't need it, right? The main thing is there's no way to bend out the lock bar. So this is, this is fine. Uh, runs on bearings. Absolutely no blade play up, down, left, or right. It's also a good geometry for the liner lock. It doesn't surprise me, whoever the OEM is, they did a good job. Um, felt a little lock stick there. It was probably from the impacts. It was absolutely from the impacts. No blade play up, down, left, or right. No lock stick, no pivot lash. Very smooth and consistent in here. Very nice detent with no detent lash. Very good. And how's the centering? Well, would you look at that? Imagine that. It's pretty much dead on. It actually looks for a sec. Look for a second like maybe it was leaning. Is it leaning? If it is, it's very, very slight. I have to assume that it's pretty darn centered. Anyways, this is a premium knife. And there's also a lot of extra here. Now, there are other companies out there that are doing a lot of the same. Not exactly the same but a lot of the same for less, right? 
Um, we got companies that are out there doing this for about 225, 235. Um, but this is really nice. And it comes in at 275, which is okay. I, I, you know, I would have been there. I, I'd have been there 100% if the finish on the blade was a little bit different, right? Maybe we had a milled clip instead of a stamped clip. I mean, actually, that's not fair. This is a milled clip. <laughs> it's, oh no, wait. No, I'm wrong. No, this is stamped. It's literally a clip on top of a, like a spacer. Okay. So I'd have been much happier with a milled clip. Right, one's a little shorter and less of a ergonomic problem. But the fit and finish, as far as fit and finish goes that we expect at the $275 mark, this is there. My nitpicks are just with some of, even though the word finish is in fit and finish, I have a different preference for the finish that I wanna see on the blade. It's indicative of a higher price point, right? And every other nitpick I have is just with little tiny design things, right? But they're not too far off from their competition. I think most people will view this as slightly high. You're going to have, you know, I, I don't know if you're not familiar with my channel. I, I don't really, um, I'm not, I'm not really overly concerned with like offending people. So I'll just say this. You're going to have some absolutely brain dead people who have no idea how pricing works in the knife world. And they're just going to shout out that the knife should be $50. Those people are idiots and we don't need to pay attention to them. But if you are familiar with this territory, right? I'm going to report that guy to Reddit. If you are familiar with this uh, territory, you're familiar with knife pricing, right? Let's be honest with ourselves. The, uh, the bias you have is against CRKT because of how the name is generally synonymous with not necessarily, you know, consistent low quality, just a lower price point. So it's kind of like when Kershaw came out with a live wire. We had a lot of people going, $240 for a Kershaw, right? Just throwing out the window the fact that they made a super premium USA OTF that was legitimately competitive, right? They just can't get their minds around the fact that it has this name on it, right? Um, so if you can let that part go and be honest with yourself, they're not terribly outside of, you know, the expected pricing window. I think this is very impressive as far as the CRKT project. I also think that it's much more aesthetically appealing than what a lot of people expect from CRKT. And for some people, this is going to be reason enough to pick it up. I don't know about everybody, right? If they had hit this thing at 230, I would have been like, wowzers. That's pretty great, right? 275 things a bit high, but it's not, not terrible. I'm not upset, especially considering you know, the colors and the look and everything. I, I don't think, I, I'm, I'm not hating on this. I think it's pretty cool, right? It makes me want to pay attention to CRKT and what they do in the future. So that's where I'm at with this knife. Thanks again to CRKT for sending it in. Links for this guy in the description. Please make sure to follow me on Instagram at metal underscore complex. If you enjoyed this video, leave a like. If you'd like to check out my other content, I do of course have Lots of videos of knives that are either expensive or inexpensive that I do or don't like, so check those out. And if you enjoy all my content, go ahead and click on that Metal Complex logo right there and subscribe because there's definitely more coming. Thanks again for watching, everybody, and have a great day.